Hello there, and welcome to the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast, episode 11. I hope that the test went well, and wasn't too much of a shock, and that you felt well prepared. Like I said during the test episode, don't take it too seriously, use it to inform your revision and your studying, and let's cover the previous episode's words. Those were coagulate, vernal, recondite, and quiescent. These were episode 10's words. Coagulate means to change from a fluid into a thickened mass, often a thicker fluid or even a solid. It can mean curdle and congeal. Vernal means related to spring or appearing in spring. It can even mean spring-like, meaning youthful. Recondite, that means dealing with difficult or esoteric subject matter, little known or beyond ordinary knowledge. Quiescent, that means being at rest, being quiet, still, motionless. Before we get started with the new words, just wanted to say, sorry, I haven't been super frequent with updates recently. My work, my day job has been kind of crazy. So I've been working a few late nights and sometimes at weekends too. So it means I haven't had as much time for recording podcasts. So sorry about that. I am going to try and get a few recorded as backups for the future when I have a quiet period. So I have some for those times when I can't record a podcast. That said, let's get started with some new words. Our first word is archaic. Archaic, that's spelled A-R-C-H-A-I-C, archaic. Now, that word archaic means very old or old-fashioned. An example sentence would be, prisons are run on archaic methods. Archaic can also mean no longer in everyday use, but sometimes used to give an old-fashioned flavor. So someone may use an old-fashioned word, you could say that is archaic. Some synonyms are obsolete, out of date, behind the times, bygone and antiquated, even antediluvian, or old world, old fangled. If any of you have seen any of the Indiana Jones movies, there's one movie called Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Or maybe it's just called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Anyway, if you think of the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant in the movie is something that's very old, almost archaic. So if you think archaic, you could think Ark. Or Noah's Ark. Again, Noah's Ark is incredibly old. Our second word is innocuous. Innocuous. That is spelled I-N-N-O-C-U-O-U-S. Innocuous. Innocuous means not harmful, not offensive. It means a statement that wouldn't offend someone. It wouldn't make someone feel bad. Synonyms for innocuous are harmless safe, innocent, non-toxic. So often children, young children especially, who are innocent, will ask innocuous questions. And that's a classic example, actually. Innocuous is really often used for questions or statements, being safe, non-toxic. So you could say, the child asked me a sweet and innocuous question. A good way of remembering innocuous might be innocent, because that is actually a synonym too, and they both begin with the same sound, inno, innocuous, innocent. So that's a good way of remembering that one. Our third word is subpoena, subpoena. That is spelled S-U-B-P-O-E-N-A. So it doesn't really sound like it's written. Subpoena. And a subpoena is something you may be familiar with if you've ever watched 
a courtroom drama show, because it is a legal work. And a subpoena is a legal summons, essentially telling someone to go to court. It is, strictly speaking, a writ, that's spelled W-R-I-T, ordering a person to attend a court. So my example sentence was, After chasing too many cats, my puppy was issued a subpoena. However, when he attended court, the judge found him too cute to sentence and let him off with a caution. So, subpoena is one of those that the way it sounds is not like what it means. So there isn't really a tricky way or a clever way of remembering it. So, you're going to have to just think of some funny sentences that stick in your mind. That's why I made mine so weird. <laughs> so, again, it is a legal document ordering someone to attend court. Our fourth word is quibble. Quibble, that is spelled Q-U-I-B-B-L-E, quibble. A quibble is a slight objection or a small criticism. It also means to argue or raise objections about something which is trivial. My example sentence is, the annoying student kept interrupting the professor with quibbles. Some synonyms are to object to, to find fault with, to complain about. So, those are our four words of the day. And as always, I'm going to now give four sentences, each of which refer to those words, and your job is to work out which word I'm referring to. My sister was stung by a jellyfish when we were on vacation in Malaysia. However, luckily, the poison turned out to be totally harmless. My grandma has very antiquated and old-fashioned views about relationships. She was shocked when I kissed my girlfriend in public. My friend once dressed as Captain Jack Sparrow, the pirate, for Halloween, but I felt that his bandana wasn't quite the correct colour. If you are called to be a witness in a court case, you can be issued with a formal summons to appear in court. So, there we have it, guys. Those were the four sentences. I hope they were pretty clear to you. As always, I welcome all the feedback, positive or negative, any criticisms or ideas for the podcast. I've received a few super kind and thoughtful emails, so I thank everyone who has emailed me. It's super kind. I love it. And it just gives me more motivation to keep making the podcasts, which is amazing. So please get in touch with me. Send me an email at sam.fold at gmail.com. It's very appreciated. And just so you know what my goal is for the podcast, in terms of episodes and so on, I want to try and do four episodes a week at least. So try and expect that. And don't get worried if I if I miss a day or so on. I've not forgotten the podcast. I've not abandoned the podcast. It's very much something I'm going to keep doing. But because of my job and because of how busy it gets sometimes, I can't record something every day. It's just not possible. But I do care about this. I am going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep going until I've done every possible word I can do. So... Even if you do the GRE, keep listening if you want, because you're only going to learn more and learn more words. And that, I think, is only a good thing in life. And part of why I did the podcast in the first place is that I believe that learning more words, becoming more articulate, becoming a better speaker, can only help you in life. Especially because English is such a widely used language. So becoming a better speaker of English is only going to help you in life. So, thank you very much, and I will speak to you next time. Bye-bye.